You now tuned in to the hottest podcast in the world. The Stay Woke Podcast. Right here on the SonicBreakdown.com. Welcome back to another Stay Woke Podcast. This is D-Ray Brinson. And you know the Stay Woke Podcast is presented by the SonicBreakdown.com. So check out the website as well as thank you for listening to another podcast. Today is going to be, today's topic is going to be talking about Joy Badass's new album, All American Badass, that was just released today, which would be April 7th, 2017. I've only listened to the album a couple of times again because it just released. I I, I waited till uh, nine o'clock Pacific time, California time, because that's when it dropped on the East Coast. So I can hear it as soon as it dropped. And uh, I immediately, you know, um, started taking a listen and, and really enjoyed what I was hearing and wanted to uh, do a podcast and let you guys know how I broke it down, what I thought of the album, uh, what I thought about the overall meaning, the concept, as well as with each track, like I do with the breakdown reviews that you can read on the sonicbreakdown.com, I tend to break down each individual track and then give an overall summary of the whole project. So let's begin with, let's start actually with the, the title itself and the cover art. The cover art is if you, you know, bought the physical copy, there's a, a CD cover and that has the American flag made out of uh, bandanas. And then if you, you know, take the paper copy, the paper cover all off and you go into a little bit deeper and you see the, the actual cover is Joey with a uh, jacket out of the hood of an old car with that same flag made out of bandanas on the antenna kind of giving that all-american feel uh, of you know on the road and uh, i think it's a chevy you know an american car with that american feel and the open the freedom of it coming into this album we already knew that it was going to be political touching on social commentary regarding race and racism in america um, systematic racism institutional racism um, and how that's affecting black people and you know his people as as him being a a black man and and becoming i won't say becoming more socially aware but definitely pushing that more in his lyrics because um as we go through the album we'll see uh why why you know this kind of came into fruition the singles that were released prior to the album being prior to the album being released were land of the free which as soon as i heard that drop i was instantly blown away i thought it was an amazing song i'll go into more detail later devastated which at first i i kind of it didn't fit for me but then when i take into the context of this album i did like the song but again it did it kind of grew on me initially when i first heard it it just it didn't feel right it grew on me like i said Um, and then i'll go into more details about how i felt about it in the context of the flow of the album and then the last single that was released, which was, I believe, last week, was Rockabye Baby with uh, Schoolboy Q, which is a, it's a banger. Right in the whip, it bumps, you know, again, like I said, I'll get into more detail. But let's be, let's let's get crack into this album and start, again, I've only listened to this a few times, but I haven't really got to digest it. So there, my opinions about certain songs will change, my opinions about the production will change as it grows, really get into it. The intro is called Good Morning America. And just like in the title, the America has three K's. And we all know that's um, significant, especially racially, of KKK, a white supremacist group uh, that has been known, that not has been known, that is known for lynching black men, black people. So that already has a stigma associated with it. So it kind of preps you for what this album is going to be, as well as what that this track is going to sound sound like. But when I heard the production instantly, it had a nice joyful alertness to it of kind of like, like it's saying, good morning, uh, America. You need to be awake. You need that. Something is going to happen. This, this is kind of like that. I don't want to say the calm before the storm, but sort of like that calm before the storm where it's like, you need to be alert. And there's, there's an alertness in the, the production itself. That alertness is kind of like preparing you to be like mentally awake and focused for what's going to happen. Just like good morning is you're you're waking up to the morning. This is him kind of saying like he's awoke. He's been he's been woken. As we say on the stay woke, stay woke. You know we say that for a reason. We want you to be conscious. We want you to be aware. We want you to analyze and you know think deeper. You know have thought provoking. We want to spark thought provoking conversations, ideas, just based on you know us trying to uh, awaken ourselves. And that's what he's talking about here as well as you know being not just literally. Um, awake to your surroundings and aware of your surroundings, but being mentally and physically and emotionally and psychologically aware to the things that are affecting us in different manners. And this track kind of gets you prepared for that. In the production, there's a uh, poetic kind of snap 
that give you that kind of um, old school poetry jam sessions but that that kind of would feel outdated but the smoothness smoothness of the bass kind of it modernizes it so that it does feel um it does feel like it is current today and then the thing that he does in this this intro as well is questioning what freedom is and who does it apply for because as many people know that I've said on here is that for a lot of black people we don't feel that we have the freedom that we deserve that everybody else has that white people in particular have that we don't is and it can be frustrating can be a, a gambit of emotions and he touches on a lot of these emotions throughout this album and so like the the flow of it is also important to me i think as well as the construction of it um which gives me indication that he put a lot of thought into this album and then moving on to the next track for my people the chord progression is is so pretty and so sweet and calming um kind of after the alertness that you got from the prior record, it's kind of like, like now settle in. This is why we're doing it. And he's doing it for the people, for his people, for black people, for people of color, for the oppressed. The sack kicks in and it just engulfs you into the world uh, that, that this track is creating. And the, if the bla- baseline already didn't do that for you, because the baseline is so smooth as well, giving a nice, very jazz centric feel with the sax and like I said, the baseline. When the drums come in, it gives you the momentum, keeps the beat flowing, keeps the beat rolling. And it gives that classic hip hop feel um, that kind of that, to me, what I can think of when you think of the classic Nas songs that you um, you think of, Street Dreaming, like that kind of, that kind of like, bounce that kind of feel of is it it is inspiring in its sound but not in the typical inspiring like it's subtly making you inspired if that makes any sense the the changing of the pace as well as the dynamics keep the production like i said interesting and providing its own story outside of the lyrics that joey badass is is putting on top um the chorus in the intro informs us that joey is speaking his truth and what he sees as the solutions for us as a people that He's going to use his platform, his his voice to be a hero in the regard of a hero doesn't just not necessarily have to have powers, like he says, and I think in the first verse, but they evoke change. They evoke things for people to do better and be better. And he's doing that. And that's how this is his powers is his voice, his ability to put words together in rhyme that can resonate with people in a way that will get them to affect change. Or at least that's his hope. And he's doing it not just only for his his culture, his people, black people, his family. And he's doing it in this harsh world that doesn't want us to succeed, that doesn't want us to, to gain these bounds, that, that wants us to keep us in the place that we are, or even worse, push us even further back. The last line of the last verse goes, not to mention that they had our souls blocked ever since an adolescence. And to me, that gained more meaning when I heard the next track called Temptations. Because there's a there's sections in it that made me reflect back that line specifically again, I'll say it again, not to mention that they had our souls blocked ever since an adolescence. Moving on to the next track, Temptations, it has a very funky, slower uh, jam kind of feel. The guitar chorus brings you in as Joey sings the chorus, which to me was unexpected, but it fits and works in this song. There's a little boy that brings into attention the boys about maybe seven seven eight or nine to sup for this track having the intro as well as the outro i'll go into a little bit more meaning in what he actually says but he he just talks about that fighting for rights because of his color and the fact that he has to do that but i'll touch into that touch back to that in a little bit but i do want to say that this track to me has again it's trying to on every line every at the end of his verses He's really punching those lines in to like say like we need to wake up like this is this is our time like we need to do something again it's kind of trying to motivate but also let us know that you know there are going to be things that are blocking us these temptations the temptations to get this money the temptations of not even knowing that we're in like we are sleepwalkers and what I mean by sleepwalkers people that are just navigating through life and not realizing that there are such things as systematic oppression institutional racism when it comes to genders, the fact that males, males have a, a privilege as a result of just being male um, over women. So like not being aware of to those things so that you don't abuse it as well as do what you can to combat it. And so those are some of the things. And that's what I mean by sleepwalkers. He also talks about how you don't have to just be enslaved by, you know, racial economic situations. You can just be enslaved by your religion. Just the that thought of like kind of boxing you in and not letting you question things is, is what I took from that that line in, in particular and even though it sounds dark in his tone there's there's hope and and levity 
uh, I wouldn't say actually I won't say levity, but there's hope and within the production that balances it out that it shows you like it's a realistic approach to it that fighting this fight of trying to do better and be better and elevating your community is not going to be easy, but it will be rewarding as well. You know what I'm saying? That there, there is a balance to it and that it's going to take work. Going back to the air that when I was talking about the kid, towards the end of the track, there's a jazz transition that has the addition of choirs that give it more soulfulness to it as well. Like I said, the seven, eight or nine year old boy talks about in the beginning that he doesn't understand why people hate him because of his color, the color of his skin. And you can very plainly hear the pain and and hurt that this that this young this young this young man is feeling that this young boy is feeling and there's last two lines of that track also provides a different juxtaposition to that as well to me and the last two lines of of this particular track was we do this because we need to and have the rights so basically saying like he doesn't have a choice like if he wants to have equality he has to do this he has to fight for these and Again, the pain and the hurt in there is is so is heartbreaking, but at the same time you can hear the strength and resilience that that young man has. It gives it gave me hope that like I can do better and I will do better and I have to do better because I don't want any kids feeling that same pain, that same that same hurt. And I felt it. I I when you as a as a black person or a person of color or an oppressed person, when you realize that you are oppressed or you're in a situation where it's evident that there are biases and and hurdles that you can't overcome and it's nothing of your own doing specifically color of it's hard to it's hard to to grasp and to take in but you have to and you push on and you 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 make it through michael eric dyson wrote a book it's the sermon to white america and he talks about when his daughters face racism when girl called his daughters a nigga and he, how they had to handle that and how he saw in their faces that they understood what was happening and, and the hurt that he felt that they had to go through that. And that's the things that we need to combat by having these conversations, by evoking thought, getting people to try to then evoke change. I think that's where he's going on that song with Temptations as well. Land of the Free is one of the singles, which is the next track, is one of the singles that we talked about as being released prior to the album. It's a very good track. He goes deep. He goes hard. He's really showing awareness of holding people accountable, the hypocrisy of, of this country, as well as questioning, again, even more, the land of the free. The free to who? Free from what? Because it's not free for everybody. We all don't have these same freedoms. Uh, it's a very 80s feel in the type of, per, the type of sound, but, but still having a contemporary sound and layering. He also gives acknowledges that if if we if we acknowledge it and we speak on it it might not change in this generation but it's something that might change in further generations and i took that when he says the line um your first child and then touches on it towards the end of the track you hear uh laughter of children playing and it becomes more prominent towards the end of the track but it is layered in the production but it's faded out a, a little bit so it's not as heavy and again, that's what I'm saying about providing that hope. There's there's always layers, there's always realism, but there's always optimism that I feel in these tracks. Following by The Land of the Free is a track called Devastated. And Devastated has a light, cloudy, trip, hop sort of production that gets more trappy in a trappy type of vibe once the beat drops. Joey has a faster cadence in the production as he flows through the verses. In addition, there's outcast horns added nicely that uh, I, I picked up anyways. They kind of altered them a little bit and changed the the pattern on towards the end. I noticed more, but more in the track, it's more just strictly those same horns, but placed and varied in its, in its location during the production. And in the lyrical breakdown, he's basically saying that he's putting in the work for something and it's not guaranteed that it will work out. And having the devastation of that it might not happen. And I take this in the context, it can be it can be interpreted in many ways and a couple of ways that I interpreted one is being just devastated as as a as a culture of like always fighting this fight, always fighting having this addition additional burden that other races don't have. And so having that for so long, you can be devastated. Some people can be devastated by that and just want to give up because they're like, "Man, it doesn't matter regardless of how hard I work, how hard I do." you know, this race component is going 
to affect me. And then there's the others that will work hard and rise above it. And, but that's with any, any people, that's not just race that has to deal with, you know, that, that devastating of facing a barrier and, and either wanting to give up or try to climb over it or go through it or find some other avenue to bypass it. And that is another aspect of of being devastated. And you can take it into, you know, being a musician, being an artist, me doing this podcast. You know, I put a lot of work into this. Musicians put a lot of work into their work. Artists put a lot of work into their artwork. And for many of them, for most of them, is never guaranteed that, you know, they're going to ever sell a piece, that they're ever going to get signed by a record label or if or that their song is going to hit enough so that they can make a living off of this with the podcast. I don't, who knows what this will be, who knows what it won't be, but I'm putting a lot of time into it. So your hope is that you will, will be rewarded for your hard work. That is another aspect that you can take from this as well as just putting everything you have into something and, and pouring your heart into it and hoping that it gets through. But he, he says that we make it. And the key word in this, he used to feel devastated. He thought he wouldn't make it, but they did. And he's continued to grind, but he's not becoming complacent because he still wants to be better. He wants to, he doesn't want to just be good. He wants to be great. The next track is Why You Don't Love Me. There's a, a, a very jazzy kind of feel with a Ketaronda or internet feel to me um, with the guitar and the production. He's having, Joey's basically having a one-sided conversation with America, uh, uh, this country. He's having a one-way conversation with this country He's asking questions that we would love to have the answers to. Why do you treat us this way? Why why do, you know, just a myriad of questions. Why is there systematic oppression? He's not asking that specifically, but he's asking things that infer to those things. Why do the police kill us? Like, you know, certain things that, like, we would love the answers to. Some of those questions, we feel like we know the answers, but, it, you know, some, sometimes you know the answer, but you you haven't proved it. And that's kind of the the idea behind this track which i thought was pretty interesting especially after devastated is like you but you're devastated of how the country's shooting you you're devastated of how things might be but you're still optimistic but you still have to ask those questions why because if you don't and and that's why i on this podcast on uh, brothers to the left part three in love if you listen to that podcast uh sister to the left or sister to the right whatever you want to call her um one of the the questions i asked she said why did you ask that just like I said, there is sometimes you have to ask questions, deeper questions, questions that might not you might not have the answer to. But it, by asking the question and thinking about the answer, you'll get closer to the answer than you would have if you never asked the question, because that question might open up doors and avenues and and streams of consciousness that you wouldn't have gotten to if you didn't think of that question. And so that's what why I thought this track fit so well in the order. Um, like I said, the, the flow of this album really made sense in, in the direction that he was going and the story that he's basically telling. After that is Rockabye Baby, which <laughs> I really, really like this track. It's hard hitting. It gives you that gritty, that, uh, that, that gangster shit. <laughs> like, it really is it, definitely something that you can ride in the whip and just bounce. Joey hits you with uh, his cocky, braggadocious flow that morphs into a more aggressive joey than um on the previous tracks that we heard so far and then schoolboy to me really kills this verse like he really owns this track it he does the way that he rides this track and the his verse is so so hard that it kind of feels like it should have been a, on q's album or on q's new album which i heard he's going to be releasing album this year says uh schoolboy q and kendrick of course next week and i think j-rock too I'm not sure on the J-Rock, but I know Schoolboy Q, SZA, and Kendrick definitely will be having an album this year, according to TDE. So yeah, Schoolboy Q really killed this verse. Uh, his flow and his content and the perspective that he had on it was, to me, the classic Q is like the Schoolboy Q on uh, Black Hippies remix, that part, where he gives you that truth and you might not agree with it. You might not, you might not like the direction at which he's taking, but it's his truth and it's real. And he, and, and most of the time he makes valid points, at least in my opinion. I know I'll, that's why I said with the black hippie one, a lot of people kind of gave him some backlash because it was uh, kind of too real. And he kind of references that here in this, when he talks about this line, the line that like really stuck out was the murder weapon on me. Fuck if this bitch starts flaming, the cops patrolling, get that punk ass American flag ceremony. 
oh damn am i going too far basically saying like he's gonna ride around he got his gun if the cops start going off he gonna go off too and you know american flag ceremony he'll be dead and he's saying he's going too far because in the black hippie remix that part too when he's talking about alton sterling um the alton sterling shooting when uh the people recording it he was like basically saying how are you going to sit there and record that shit and not do anything? But if it was in the hood and your partner was getting shot by some just regular niggas, you would shoot them too. Why Why are you Why are you approaching it differently? Because they just plain all right killed him. It was his point. And to be honest, I get his mentality. I don't think they should have, you know, shot the cop. But I do think we need to change the mentality. When we see wrongdoing, we need to do I'm not saying to that extent, but we need to do more, especially when it's in our presence. And I'm not just talking about people. I'm talking about myself, too. When we see things that are out of line in in any regard, if it's, you know, domestic violence, if it's sexual assault, if it's anything like that, we need to start doing more. And and that's what I took away from that line in Black uh, Black Hebe Remix, that part, as well as in this. I'm not agreeing that we should kill cops. No, by no means am I saying that. I don't think we should be killing anybody. But I'm just saying, like, we need to keep the standards the same. And that's that's what I took away from that line. And, and really, Q, Q killed it to me on this track. So like I said, I think it felt like it was a Schoolboy Q track. But again, it does fit in this this the flow of the, the album because after you're asking America these questions and you know the answers to some of these questions and you know it's not anything positive or anything that you would really want to hear because somebody saying that they think, you know, negative things about you that aren't true you gonna get aggressive and that's why i feel like rockabye baby is like saying fuck that shit man like fuck all that shit i'm tired of this shit there's only there's only so far you'll take me ring the alarm is the next next song in this project and ring the alarm man that track is really really dope it has a it's a light production with no bass in in the beginning uh just a piano chord and then it has to me a really like the quiet storm type of feel all right so on ring the alarm it features uh nick caution Kurt Knight and Mickey Drake Darko, excuse me. And on, we know Kurt Knight is the one of Pro Era's producers, in house producers. This track, like I said, a live production, it has a quiet storm kind of feel, and it just has that feel of gotta we gotta be ready. Not 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 even we gotta be ready. It's past time to be ready. We need to start doing it. We need to start making moves now. We need to ring the alarm. It's an emergency. We, there's no more time to be waiting. There's no more time for hesitations. We have to we have to be more attentive. We have to be more aware. We have to be progressive instead of instead of reacting. We have to we have to be proactive instead of reactive. Um, in essence, like the, the alarm is on. Let's go to me. That's how that track went. Super Predator gives you a classic hip hop beat that you get from Static Selector. Styles P gives you a, a classic verse and 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 really taking taking an approach that that you you would you would expect from Styles P but he's really he's he's a dope lyricist anyway so at the end of the verse they really identify who's the last predator or who's the super predator and i just want to go back for a second and tell you the definition of a super predator so that we all are on the same page of what it's supposed to mean super predator is a a youth who repeatedly commits violent crimes as a result of being raised without morals one of the stereotypes of black men are angry black men, angry black women that were ultra violent or super violent, ultra aggressive, hypersexual, those things that we really don't have control of our emotions. And this this track really like attacks a lot of those things. Like I said, at the end of the track, I'm gonna let you go through it. And it's basically saying like, really, who's the super predators here? The government is a super predator. You know, America itself is a super predator. America was started off Again, going back to the super predator definition, a youth that does repeated violent crimes as a result of being raised without morals. America was basically raised on slavery. Slavery is something that's not moral. So America is the super predator. It's, and we can't continually do uh, violent crimes against other countries, against ourselves, against people in our country, black people, the Japanese, the Native Americans. You know, they've done it repeated times against people. Um, we're trying to do that against the Mexicans now. It really makes you really analyze and question who's the super predator and who's the one really raised without morals. Then after their super predator goes to Babylon, which I really think is a really nice track as well. 
Um, it has Chronix on it. And Chronix hit me with a surprise, to be real. There's uh, sections of it where it sounds more like Chronix is a, a, an R&B singer. The, the reggae tone isn't, I won't say it's lost. You can still always hear it, but it becomes less prominent. Not like he's hiding it. it. To me, it just really speaks of his diversity and how his voice really can translate to several different genres if, if he was pushed or given the opportunity to. Joey speaks with aggression and articulating how many black people, how many black people feel and still feel at what we're seeing in the news, in the media, in real life, the things that aren't even in the media, things that we see in our daily lives. And it really exposes some of the same thoughts and, and ideas and ideologies that uh, we brought up on other podcasts, like Will You Stand, Sit, or Take a Knee, part one and part two. He also brings up Eric Garner and and covers a lot of ground all the way to profitable prisons and how people are benefiting off of prisons and profiting off of prisons, which is crazy in itself. The horns, sometimes a sack really punctuates the emotions of certain words that Joey's given off. There is like a jazz, like a, like I said, a jazz hymn. And Chronix really gives a nice, a nice verse and a nice part of the chorus. And then as I said, when he starts to go into Chronix goes into his verse, you hear that reggae tone back, but it really fits and matches the the jazz feel, um, which to me was interesting, but makes sense when you think about and then that reggae smoothness smoothness just really finishes off the production. It's a really great track. Both of them work together very well. I, I would love to see them on another track again. Following Babylon, it goes to Legendary. Now, Legendary gives you a very deep bass line, followed by a nice piano and a sax, giving a true jazz, Afrocentric, spiritual hip-hop experience. I know that's a lot in there, but that's really what that production kind of gives. And Joey really focuses on unstructuring the story, both Joey and J. Cole's verses provoke thought and self-analysis, but still providing hope. That's a, one of the overarching themes I got from this whole album is everything always had hope associated with it, which was good because you can't just, well, you can, but it makes people, it's hard for people to fight for something when they don't believe it will, that there is any hope. I, I thought that was a very important message for him to continually have that hope in there to to make sure that the people that he is trying to invoke some change in, invoke them to do better, do more, continually have hope to keep fighting, even over these obstacles and tribulations. And this was surprising because Cole doesn't give verses to anybody. And Cole gave a real verse. <laughs> it wasn't just, let me just give you a feature. It was a nice verse. He also did the production for this track as well. On American Idol, the last track, and again, it has America with KKK. It, it has a lighter feel sound with the guitar and a bass line as its core. Joey is going in at a quick, steady tempo in the very beginning. He just really spills out everything. It's towards the end, it turns into more poetry than, than really than a verse, but it, it's still over the production. And the progression in the production is pretty nice as well. And it changes with the vibe as well as with the cadence and the, the type of flow Joey uses. One of the things that I did take away from that, the last verse, or the, the not the last verse, but the last track, was one of the lines where it might be taken as a diss to Obama, as well as Trump and basically every president, is uh, the line goes, dead presidents will represent me. I never knew a live one that represented me, that represents me. And that's where I kind of have to disagree with Joey. Um, I do agree that I wish that Obama did more, but I also think he was pigeonholed and he, there was only so much that he could do. And I also think that we have to take into account that the president is not the black president. He's not the white president. The president is America's president. He has to be as universal as he can. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't, that he can't highlight injustices of specific races, genders, demographics when it's fit. So that's where kind of I, I kind of disagree. I do like the song. I do agree with a, a good majority of what he's saying. I do definitely think that you should definitely check it out and listen for yourself. Um, this album should be listened to. It should be internalized. You should give it several listens. I know I am. As I continue to listen, I hear more and more things. I will absorb and, and take in more of the subtle meanings and subtle details as I continue to listen to the album. And some of the things I do want to highlight in my overview real quick is that all of the tracks are in capital letters indicating if this was, you know, AOL, um, Yahoo, any Facebook Messenger, whatever, or texting, all caps is basically yelling at you. And 
I thought that was kind of interesting that he's he's yelling at us that you know like I said that it's time to do action it's time to do it's time to do something as well as like I said the track order it just seemed like it all fit very well like I said before is you know good morning America is like I'm waking you up get ready for what I'm going to tell you for my people this is why I'm telling you what I'm telling you this is this is why I'm doing this for I'm doing it for my people so wake up I'm doing this for my people be cautious because there are going to be things that are going to set us back. I'm going to tell you what we need to do, but these are going to be some things that set us back. That's what happens with temptation. Land of the free. What are we what are we trying to fight for? What is free? What freedom do we have? What freedom do we need? Devastated. We're going to hit like again, we're going to hit these roadblocks. Don't let it don't let it make you devastated. We have to keep pushing. We have to keep going through. Why don't you love me anymore? America, why are you putting this on us? Why are you putting these burdens on us? Why are you holding us back? Why are you oppressing us in these areas? So we can figure out the solutions and figure out how to overcome them. Rockabye baby, basically, hey, if you <laughs> if you don't get it together, man, like fuck this shit. There's only so much shit we can take. So much shit. Ring the alarm. We letting you know we ringing the alarm. It's time for us to go. We gonna start making action. We gonna start changing shit for ourselves. And super predator, stop. Stop internalizing ourselves as negative. You know, we're not the super predator. You are Babylon, you know, sacred place, our place for freedom, our sanctuary, our, our free space. And then legendary, we going to do what we got to do to get there. And American Idol, again, is just breaking it all down. And then so basically, like I said, I think this is a really good album that it should be listened to. Let us know what you think about the album. Let us know if you think it's the best album of the year, if you think it's the worst album of the year, if you think Joey could have did better. Like what? Let us know what you think about it. This is SonicBreakdown.com. Thank you for listening. And you know our motto, live, listen to some great music, and above all, love more. They Woke Podcast, presented by TheSonicBreakdown.com. Joey, badass. All-American, badass. Out now. Peace.